Welcome back, you're watching News Tonight. It's day two of the counselling for admissions to MBBS courses to the 18 government medical colleges and self-financing medical colleges affiliated to the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University. Selection Committee Secretary R.G. Sukumar said that the counselling will be done as per merit and rule of reservation. Selection Committee will wrap up counselling before July 15th as per the orders of the Supreme Court. Moving on. A day after Pakistan claimed that it rejected any insinuation of state support for the terrorists who ravaged Mumbai in 2008, Abu Jundal has provided crucial details that suggest the opposite. The terrorist has said that an officer from Pakistan's military intelligence agency, ISI, provided two cartons of cartridges that were used during 26-11 attacks. The ISI officer he refers to is Major Samir. He has also said that the terrorists who were deputed to Mumbai were trained at Camp Bait ul Mujahideen near Muzaffarabad. Also added that Major Samir dropped in there to share two cartons of AK-47 cartridges that were taken to the terrorists to Mumbai. Alleged 26-11 handler Abu Jundal has made more revelations, detailing alleged Pakistani ISI officer Major Samir's role in the 26-11 attacks. Jundal has told the investigators that Major Samir came up to Lashkar base camp by Tul Mujahideen before the attacks and handed over two cartons of AK-47 AK to them. Jundal says those cartridges were used during 26-11 attack. Major Samir also provided logistic support for marine training. Jundal has also revealed that another alleged ISI officer, Colonel Hamza, made sure that Jundal never got arrested. Jundal went to meet Zaki Ur Rahman in jail after he was arrested. In another scene, voicing his views on economic growth, Planning Commission Chairman Montek Singh Ahwalia has said that achieving 8% economic growth in the next five years will require a major effort and cannot be taken as a God given right. Ruling out an average 9% economic expansion as set out in the 12th plan, he said that the lowering of ambitions for the period between 2012 to 2017 will be internally discussed in the planning commission. He also added that this was being done in view of a sharp deterioration in the world economy and its impact on India. We have to make that decision. Now, my personal view yes, is that at the time of the approach paper yes, uh, a year ago, uh, we had targeted a 9% average growth. I think given that the world economy deteriorated very sharply in the last year, yes, and I think the growth rate in the first year of the ninth plan cannot be, has to be somewhere between 6.5 and 7%. Yes, sir. It is not possible to think of an average of 9%, yes. but this is a view that the planning commission has to take. Yes. I think somewhere between 8 and 8.5 and is feasible, but you know, when I say feasible, even that will require major effort. In fact, uh, during this uh, meeting with the states, we are going to make the point that we should not just say that, you know, if we do A, B and C, we can do eight and a half. BJP leader Yashwan Sinha has lashed out at Prime Minister Manmohan Singh over his failure to effectively combat economic slowdown despite remaining in power for almost eight years. Sinha also blamed the federal government for not developing consensus with regards to initiating economic reforms in the country. He also alleged that Manmohan Singh had defended corrupt ministers and added that he would have continued to do so if the country's apex court had not intervened. They're all platitudes. You see, the problem with Manmohan Singh has been that he has always acted as a consultant to the government, saying what should be done, what need not be done. You know, he's been prime minister for eight years. Before that, he was uh, finance minister for five years. And clearly, he had all the opportunity in the world to implement what he believes in. Now, at the end of uh, eight years, he cannot say this should be done, that should be done. In what comes as a relief for Narendra Modi, he will not be charged with contempt of court for refusing to sanction the prosecution of one of his ministers in Gujarat. The Gujarat High Court dismissed a petition that wanted the chief minister to be held in contempt for failing to follow the country's court's orders while deciding whether Purushottam Solanki, a cabinet minister, should be prosecuted for corruption. 
The High Court further added that the Cabinet should forward documents related to its decision to the Governor who will then indicate whether to accept or reject the Chief Minister's decision. There is growing support for Rishiraj Singh, the Joint Director of CBI in Mumbai, who has been taken off the other society case and transferred to the Economic Offences Wing. The Maharashtra Wing of the BJP has written to the Prime Minister and Home Minister not to transfer the official. The letter says that transferring the officer at the time when investigations are still on is inappropriate and it should be stopped. Incidentally, Rishi Raj's transfer orders came just a day after the CBI filed a charge sheet in the Adarsh housing scam. The Enforcement Directorate has been granted permission to quiz Jagan Mohan Reddy in the alleged illegal assets case. The ED had filed an application in the court asking for permission to question Mr. Reddy as he was earlier chairman of Jagati Publications, which publishes Telugu Daily Sakshi. Jagati Publications reportedly received investments from firms based abroad in return for the favours doled out to them by the then government of Jagan's father, Vice Rajashekhar Reddy. The directorate had wanted to probe these links. Two militants were killed and a jawan was injured in an encounter in Handwara area of Kupwara district in Kashmir. Army and police had launched a joint operation in Bowen village in Nogam sector last evening following information about the presence of ultras in that area. Apparently, the identity and the group affiliation of the deceased militants is not known yet. For the past week, Pinky Pramanik, an award-winning athlete, has been reduced to an exhibit in a media-driven circus. A video showing the athlete undergoing tests at a private nursing home has gone viral online. Now, as questions arise of her dignity being violated, there comes some relief as Calcutta High Court has ordered a probe into the alleged violation of her rights. The cybercrime experts have been sought for to probe the rights violation. The court has also asked the government to file an affidavit against the allegations of rights violations within two weeks. Pinky Pramanik has been accused of being a male and raping her former partner and is currently in judicial custody. We move to a short break now. Stay with us.